Yes, this episode is going to be on Carol Shelby. So let's get into it. Welcome to another episode of Gearhead Man. I'm Mark, your host. And this episode is going to be on racing legend Carol Shelby and car builder and all that that wraps up Carol Shelby. Now, this episode is going to be on an interview he did talking about himself and talking about a piece of his history focusing on his interaction with Ford Motor Company and how that came to be and what came out of that. And then I also want to share a few of uh, Carol Shelby's quotes over the years and a couple of my favorite ones from Carol Shelby. And then I want to talk a little bit more about Carol Shelby and Shelby American and uh, some highlights of his career and, and, you know, where where he came from uh, and in a nutshell the evolution of Shelby American. So let's get started. With Peterson publication came to me and said Ford has a new small block uh, V8 and uh, you might put something together with them and I also knew that AC had lost their deal with Bristol engine so uh, I called AC and, uh, and asked him if they were interested in building a couple of chassis. And I ran into Dave Evans from Ford, who was out here on the mobile economy run. And he, uh, he took me back to uh, Don Fry. And Don Fry took me to Lee Icoca. And I told them if they give me $25,000, I'd build a couple of prototypes that'd blow the Corvette off in the weeds. Icoca looked at me kind of funny, but I got the 25000 I put the first car together, and uh, uh, I told them that I needed some help management-wise, that I knew what I wanted to build, but I needed uh, infrastructure, and they gave me a guy named Ray Geddes, who was a lawyer and a, and a CPA, and uh, uh, we took over Revent Lowe's facility, and thank God for Bob Taskin and a bunch of other people at Ford. They helped me get off the ground. I uh, took two of them back there for before 4,000 dealers in 1962 that fall and they both blew up they made us sit there till they started steaming uh, before they let us drive them by the dealership in front of the 4,000 dealers I figured well this deal's over with Ford but anyway Icoca stayed with me and uh, the other day I was down at his house talking to him and we were laughing about some of the things that have happened over the years you know, with Ford and the other companies. and uh, But that's the way it started with Ford. Uh, we had a, had great enthusiasm. We were blowing the Corvettes off in the weeds. Uh, all we had to do was show up and we'd, we'd beat them. We had customers that couldn't drive very well to blow the Corvettes off, uh, much less our team. But I knew that uh, I had the back in, uh, in the back of my mind uh, going to Europe the world championship at the time for GT cars. I felt wonderful about us winning one, two, and three in 66, but Ken Miles, we, we made a horrible decision in saying the three cars come over exactly together. It was good politically for Ford, so I couldn't argue with it. Besides that, I work for Ford, and I'm not gonna go against Henry Ford. 67, <clears throat> Bunch of guys that didn't know anything about racing were still in, in the racing department and they talked Leo Beebe into putting a bunch of dirt track racers into the cars at Le Mans. And Foyt and Gurney were the least likely winners. 
and uh, we were given them, and everybody thought they'd uh, they'd blow up. Well, they didn't. Gurney did a beautiful job of not showing Foyt how fast the car would go, and Foyt did a fabulous job in driving within his limits, realizing that 24 hours is a long time, taking care of the engine, taking care of the the gearbox and so forth. <clears throat> but the real deciding factor in 66 and 7 was the fact that Phil Remington, the old hot rodder, pre-war hot rodder that made the Cobra what it was, it wound up, didn't have one bolt in it from AC cars when we finally uh, put it back together and got it in racing trim. And he figured out how to change the rotors in one minute. When we, when we took off from the starting line in 66 and 67, we weighed 4,000 pounds with a driver and a gasoline. Kinetic energy at the end of that three and a half mile straight was so, so high uh, from the from brake temperatures and so forth that the brakes would have probably lasted two or three hours and that would have been all. But he figured it out. That was the key to us winning the race in 66 and 7. Of course, there's a lot of other work. We had engines, gearboxes that lasted. We had some very good people taking care of the cars, but the fact that we could change the brakes in one minute was the key. Ford won four straight years at Le Mans, and uh, Henry said after 67, says, okay, I proved to General Motors and Chrysler that broke the agreement that we had that we were capable of going racing and winning the greatest races in the world. We've won Indianapolis, we've won Le Mans, we've won the World Championship, there's nothing else to win. Let's take care of the safety and emission problems that we have before us now. So racing went away for years, for practically 20 years. Because of Edsel Ford, Ford has always maintained the last 50 years a prominent position in the racing world, and I think that that's been a great advantage to the company. And I couldn't be happier at 88 years old than to be with Ford and know that I'm going to be there the rest of my life. The favorite production car would have to be the Cobra. The ones that I built sell for up to 15, 20 million dollars now in the six Daytona Coupes that won the world championship. I didn't hold on to them because used race cars used to be the most worthless thing you could own the next year. Uh, but the Cobra, we built a thousand of them. They maintained their price. English Magazine the other day had it on the cover, said it's the most successful sport car that's ever been built. More knockoff specialists have, uh, have copied it than any other car that's ever been built. It would never happen without Ford Motor Company and their support. You know, I'm 88 years old. You know, I wish I was 38 again, like I was when we started. Because there's so many things that I would like to be a part of. Automobiles are going through, to me, they call it the, the 60s, the golden age of the automobile. And I had fun back then. Did a lot of things that I wanted to do. But we're getting into some things now that are very interesting. Electric cars. Uh, different types of fuel. Uh, they're calling them the green years. And I'd like to be around to see how this works out. I'd like to be a part of it, but at 88, you got to realize the reality of life. I won't be around to see it, but until I cross the river, I'm going to be a part of it and be interested in what's happening right now. It's very interesting. Here are a few of my favorite Carol Shelby quotes.
over the years. Carol Shelby was born in 1923 and died in 2012. Um, he was 89 years old. Uh, so he spent a good portion of the last years of his life uh, with Ford. And, and uh, Shelby American created a lot of great cars for Ford. Shelby GT350 back in uh, 1965. Um, which was getting close to the 60th anniversary of that car and then in I believe it was 68 he he uh, created the GT500 uh, GT500 still around uh, a few years ago Ford came back with new models of the GT350 as well it's kind of cool uh, and I love those quotes from Carol Shelby uh, one of my other favorite quotes I didn't put there from Carol Shelby, every time he was interviewed by the car magazines and they asked him, what's your favorite Shelby Mustang? And he would always say the next one. <laughs> I, always, I always loved that. <laughs> He's always looking ahead. Now in 1962 is when Carol Shelby established Shelby American. And their first was in Southern California. Um, I not sure when they moved it to Nevada to Las Vegas but they were out near the racetrack for a lot of years and they knew it would be better to have a bigger and better facility and something closer to the Las Vegas Strip so they get a lot of fans and uh, people to come out you know take a look at the Heritage Museum and also maybe while they're there uh, purchased one of their vehicles um, but that didn't open till 2013 and it's they started construction while Carol was still alive but he passed away before it was officially opened and he could actually see it completed that was kind of sad but uh, it's a thing man if you're in Las Vegas you need to go out and check out uh, the Sh uh, Shelby American facility and uh, check out all the cars in the Heritage Museum. Now, it was kind of funny that towards the end of uh, Carol's interview, he started talking about electric cars and that uh, he thought there would be big things happening with the electric car industry and, and, and going forward in the world. Um, because Shelby American will be making their version, their spin, and make a Shelby Ford Mustang Mach-E Shelby Edition. One of the biggest innovations probably they did for Ford was the GT40 which, which helped Ford win those uh, European races and world champion and all that uh, that Shelby uh, mentioned in his interview. Um, which became the forefather of the Ford GT. Now, I never had a chance to meet uh, Carroll Shelby, but at his facility out by the racetrack here in Las Vegas, where he was working, I was in there at the same time he was. So that's the closest I ever got to Carroll Shelby was being in the same building uh, at the same time. <laughs> I wish I could have shook his hand. He was an amazing man. And the automotive world is going to miss him. Uh, he was, I think he was kind of ahead of his time. He was a brilliant uh, race car driver, a brilliant uh, car maker. Again, I'll say to end this uh, talking about Carroll Shelby, if you're a Mustang fan, if you're a Carroll Shelby fan, if you ever make it out to Vegas, definitely go to his facility, Shelby American, and take a look at a lot of the cars that, uh, that he worked on and was behind. 
um, the uh, Shelby um, Heritage Museum. It's a pretty cool place. Uh, there are even some souvenirs and things you can get. And uh, while you're there, if you own a Mustang and you would like to have Carol Shelby's autograph on one of the inside panels, you can get that done. It's an auto pen, but still it's his signature. And it's only $50, and 100% of that $50 goes to uh, his foundation, which his foundation does a lot. Now, I will include um, links to Shelby American and anything else I think is interesting connected with uh, Carol Shelby in the uh, description below. All right. This also brings the end of another episode of Gearhead Man. I thank you for watching. I thank you for being subscribers. If you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button and definitely hit the bell icon. That way you get a notification every time a new episode posts. Now, the more subscribers we can get here at Gearhead Man, it gives us more power to do more things. So thank you for watching. Uh, definitely let me know what you thought about this episode in the comments below. Uh, good or bad, you know, I can't know if it's broken if I don't know what to fix or reverse that. I can't fix it if I don't know what's broken. All right. And if you have any suggestions on what you would like to see here on Gearhead Man, uh, leave those suggestions below as well. All right. Thank you, everyone. You have a great week and we'll see you next episode. Bye.